So you're probably wondering what is Fortnite clone? And of course the question we got from everybody was why did we remake Fortnite? Well, we're gonna show you. None of us know how to use Unreal Engine, so we're watching tutorials right now, and we're f crazy because we want to make Fortnite in under a week. Yep, we were f crazy. I don't know if it's possible, but I believe that we won't do it. So, it's legit been a day. Um, this is definitely harder than we thought. <laughs> It's definitely really hard, I'm gonna be honest. Like right now, I'm literally just trying to pick up a weapon and equip it to the player's hand. So it actually recognizes the the weapon, but I couldn't get it to attach to the arm. I thought I added a socket to the hand of this skeleton guy, but clearly I was wrong. I still got a ways to go. It's unreal compared to Unity at least. Documentation wise for C++ isn't that great For blueprints though, it's pretty solid, but I'm trying to do everything mostly in C++ Some simple running instead Really simple Super simple, but yeah for now We'll worry about that later right now What we're gonna do instead is we're gonna make a model where the character has the gun in his hand and when he does pick up the gun, we're gonna switch from the original model with no gun in the hand to that model. And that's what Ryan's doing right now. So what you guys are seeing now is a time lapse from when we were working from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. And we just wanted to show that we met up every day for weeks working at least five hours a day when we had other priorities such as school and work. And if you guys wanna get into a project like this or game development in general, just know that it's going to take a while. Even us, we thought we were gonna do this in one, two weeks, and it ended up taking way longer than that. Okay guys, so like I said before, we had no knowledge of Unreal or C++ before starting this. And if I'm gonna be honest, if I could go back since I was a noob, I would have started with Blueprints because it's definitely much easier than C++. So here we have, I just loaded up the third person C++ template and the first thing I tried doing in this game was just to simply attach the gun to the player's hand. So as you can see now, this is where I actually create a socket and then call the attach the component function so that I can attach the gun to the player's socket in one of their hands. Now onto the building. So, this is where I started playing with Spawn Actor, and I did in the tick function, so that it kind of looks like the building is always in front of the player. And in this next clip, this is where we kind of change the color of the preview of the wall so that we can resemble the actual Fortnite game. And the first thing, I know it's going to be in the comments, we did not do grid placement. That's right, you can pretty much build anywhere as you can see here. I mean, that's just how it went because we didn't want to spend too much time on this and we wanted to move on to other features because we just found them more important. Okay, so this guy, this is a character we made in Adobe Fuse. We won this guy in our game, but he just looked freaking weird. As you can see, that is our first weapon mesh and assault rifle that was made by our friend Mike. Kudos to him. We will link him down below. And as you can see, this is when we started working with an aim offset, which took these aim poses from Unreal's animation starter pack 
their tutorial on it on their website is great and at this point we also started working with our own animation graph as well as our own custom states in our state machine so walking forward backward sideways every direction aiming with the weapon etc finally we implemented real shooting in the game we did projectiles instead of line traces just because that was a personal preference and for the longest time we had no idea how to make the bullet travel the path we wanted to that's because in spawn actor i had no idea what rotation to use luckily there was an example a first person shooter example on github that said use the rotation of the weapon socket once we had the path right then we just did overlap functions so that the bullet can actually collide with structures, players, and destroy them. Here we have more items, the bandages, the ammo drops, the shotgun, the pickaxe, the assault rifle, all made by Ryan and Mike. More examples of building, shooting, and let's commence the map building montage. So what you're looking at is actually about a four to five hour long recording that we turn into a time lapse of about one minute and 20 seconds. I used three different assets to mine for materials to build the map. We made two different trees, one taller, one small, one car with two different colors, and I made five different shaped rocks we could put throughout the map. When making the map, since we are doing a Fortnite clone, I really wanted to shape the map like Fortnite. As you can see, I'm kind of building outside terrains, how Fortnite looks. I never really wanted to make too much of a flat terrain because it would look kind of strange and people would have nowhere to hide behind. Chris and I being so new to Unreal, we were unaware at the moment that I could use a feature to randomize all the assets throughout the map. So as you can see, I spent actually four to five hours single placing each and every little one. We used a couple more building assets that we used to build huts, cities, and neighborhoods, kind of like Tilted Towers and Pleasant Park in Fortnite. Just want to take a moment to thank Shane from Game Dev Academy on YouTube for teaching us how to use the sculpting tool so that we can make this awesome looking map. After we built the map, we added the rest of the materials, wood, brick, and steel. The player can mine them using their pickaxe, and they can also switch between materials while they're in build mode using right click, and the materials can be farmed by mining trees, rocks, and cars. I remember we thought this was the last thing we were going to implement was the custom UI slash the HUD that basically just kept track of how many bullets you had and how many materials you had left. But we would later find out once we started doing multiplayer that this was far from the truth. The reason why this game could not be done in two weeks. Replication. The concept of what you wanted on your client to be quote unquote replicated to all the other clients by sending that to the server first. This was so hard because we basically, all of the things that you saw before was done purely in a single player setting. So when we moved to multiplayer, we legitimately had to take all of our functions and put them into server RPCs so that things that the client does are sent to the server and then that is sent so that it's replicated to all the clients so that basically they can see those actions. So right now you see the building before you saw movement. And this just took forever. We had to restructure all of our code. And on top of that, we had to put this game on Amazon Game Lift, which was not only expensive, but super hard, at least for me to do. Because now I'm being serious, the documentation was not the best and those game lift forms were okay but i'm not knocking at them because their product their servers are really good the performance i definitely can't complain but again you combine the server with the replication and that stuff alone combined maybe took up the bulk of this project which is crazy because all the features we did in single player actually did take probably only two weeks but in the end what made this project go to that two month mark was literally 
everything related to multiplayer. While we're on the topic of Amazon Game Lift, huge shout out to Yeti Tech Studios on GitHub for providing their amazing Game Lift client SDK because without that, we would literally have no players on our game because no one would be able to connect to the server. Last thing I want to touch on was the storm. This also gave me issues specifically because of replication once again. Back with building, back with movement, when you were replicating things, there was usually the client directly sending stuff to the server to be replicated. With the storm, there was no owner. So it took me forever to find out that I had to click this checkbox called relevant to all instead of relevant to owner so that I can make the storm shrink and all the players would actually see that and be affected by that. So in this clip you can see me and my friend Alex recreating some Fortnite clone clips in the actual Fortnite just so you can see the side by side comparison of both games. Before we end this video guys, I just want to give a huge shout out to Mike and Ryan who helped make all the models and design the level. Also again, Ryan for making the video, doing all of our promotions. Also, this was a community effort. Whenever I was stuck on a problem, I would always go to the Unreal Slackers Discord and there is always these smart people willing to help out, no problem. Also, Unreal Q&A forums, can't forget about those guys, as well as all the people who post amazing tutorials on YouTube, as well as the people on our Discord, the Flopperam Discord, for coming out to every single test session for the most part and being so patient with us. I swear there are times where we made people wait literally hours after the scheduled time for testing, so kudos to those guys. Also, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, we really appreciate it. And of course, our game is open source, so we will have a GitHub link in the description below. And thank you for watching. Like Chris said, guys, thank you so much for watching the video and especially for making it all the way to the end. We have our Twitter and our Instagram links down below. Make sure to follow us. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel because we're going to be posting a lot more stuff very soon. And we have our GitHub repo, of course, down below if you want to go check that out. Thank you so much for watching, guys.